Hello, everyone, and welcome to Isaac News Today, where you get the best news from Isaac today. All right, so I hope everyone's day has been good. It has been quite the week, I think we can all say. A lot of crazy has happened, but life is good. <laughs> yes. So how has everyone's week been for you? For me, college, there's just been so much info being passed along. What is happening for y'all? I keep asking that because I'm dying to know. All right. So with that, we're going to get right into our news of the day, which to me, I don't know why, but for some reason, fire came to mind. So I went and found on sciencing.com many fun facts about fire. I could have talked about the different colors and, you know, how there's blue, black, uh, green, and standard red or orange. But I decided to be a little more creative and think about the temperature of fire. The flame of a candle technically has two parts, the inner core and the outer core, according to sciencing.com. And the outer core can burn at roughly 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The inner core burns at 1,450 degrees Fahrenheit. And just for a reference, a candle, that means a bonfire has typically 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit if maintained with, like, coal or however you burn a bonfire. I've been to bonfire. Have y'all started a bonfire? I haven't. I've been to bonfires, but... And if you have, what's your what's your secret to, like, stacking? I don't know. Okay. So, <laughs> we'll get right into the dojo, and let's get started answering your questions, grasshoppers, because we have a good number today, and I am very excited to answer all of them. And Kim says, yes, thank you, yes. I think it's in reference to the bonfire, but yes, what was it like? I mean, y'all know what it's like, like Lincoln Logs? You guys remember those? I remember, like, people stack them like a square. That's how I remember a bonfire. Are there other kinds? Also, I have an audience member with me today, the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. <laughs> she loves getting all the attention. So let's get right into your questions, shall we? And first up, from Woody Rather, they are here asking, Would you rather have chapped lips that never heal or terrible dandruff that cannot be treated? Would you rather lose all of your money or lose all the pictures you've taken? And would you rather live without hot water or for showers or baths or live without a washing machine? Man, we're we're starting out intense. Okay. Um, Kim, thank you for agreeing. Yes, my mom is definitely beautiful. I agree with that. And Andrew, you're here for the mayo. Be patient. Be patient, my brother. My real life brother. Thank you for watching. But okay, to answer your question, would you rather... I think I would rather have terrible dandruff because then I could wear a hat and no one could know or I guess I could just shave my head and then you know just rock the bald look because chapped lips everyone's gonna notice that so that's what I would do and would you rather lose all your money or all the pictures you've taken I guess I have my memory so I don't really have that much money so I guess losing all my money wouldn't set me back too much so that really depends if I was a millionaire, I'd pick the pictures because then I would invent a machine that could replicate my memories and I could get even better pictures. So as a rule of thumb, I guess I'd get rid of all my pictures so that way my family can just send me theirs and I'll still have the memories. What about y'all? That's a very hard question. Thank you for asking. And the last one, would you rather live without hot water or live without a washing machine? Washing machine. Because I like my showers and baths. And my mom just pointed out, yes, a laundromat still exists. So it's not all washing machines are gone. I would just always go to my neighbor and say, hey, it's that time. Kim, money is overrated. True, true. It's power is not. Well, it is, but yeah, I agree with you. Money cannot buy your happiness, but it can buy you a lot of things that can make you happy temporarily. But lasting happiness is with God. Okay, so... From Galaxy. Welcome back, Galaxy. Sorry I haven't written back in a while, but I took your advice and talked to the people I trust. Good for you. 
I am starting to form a friendship with the guy I like, and so far I think it's going well. I am going into college soon, and I'm thinking about a degree in psychology and business. Do you have any advice about how to prepare for college, and what is your preferred studying style? Great questions. When it comes to preparing for college, you need to make sure you know yourself and you know what you want your future self to look like, and then don't let anyone change that. I'm glad that it worked out and you're getting a friendship with the guy you like. Congratulations. As far as psychology goes, I've spoken to some psychologists because I debated going into psychology, and they have told me if you're going for psychology, you need to have more than a bachelor's degree. Otherwise, it's just a piece of paper. So be prepared for that. Talk to people who have degrees in psychology and business to see how it was for them. And study hard. My preferred studying style is quick and effective, I guess. Memor memorization, memorization, and what you don't need to know, forget. I, I hope that helps. I'm not, like, the best studier. My brother's better than me. But I'm just memorization. I see it, I remember it, I repeat it. Because that's what the teachers want. Or do they? They do. If they don't, I don't know why they're teaching. Okay. From Susan, they are here asking, what is the craziest food you have ever eaten? Would you eat it again? Big toss-up, traveled around Europe, so had a lot of unique tasting food. And in America, we have some here too, like frog, frog's legs. Those are good. Definitely recommend. In Europe, we had like gelled meat. It looked like cat food in Germany. And it was cold, and they served it with hot potatoes. Or one of the craziest things I had was when we visited Denmark, we had open-faced sandwiches. And I'm a closed-faced sandwich kind of guy. But they were delicious, and I would recommend them. You just have to make sure you have napkins and you don't spill everything everywhere. That would be a real shame if someone did that. And when it comes to studying, Andrew says, quick and effective. I wish I would have thought of that. Well, hey, that's why I'm here, brother. <laughs> okay. From Janice, thanks for having this show each week. You have some great followers with some terrific questions. I do. I'm very lucky. I hope that you will keep doing this fun show and that your followers will keep sending in questions. Good luck with your mayo challenge tonight. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, man versus mayo. That's what all of tonight is about. If y'all haven't seen it, Ultimate Showdown, where I will win, because mayo is an inanimate object. And it's looking at me right here. All right, from Randy. It sounds like you have lived in many different places. True, I just listed some of them in the previous one. I am sure there is something special about each place. Would you please tell us what is the most difficult part of moving so often? What is the best part What is the best part about moving so often? Thanks for your show and vulnerability each week. My family and I really appreciate your candor. Thank you. I appreciate your family appreciating my candor. It's great. Most difficult part of moving? Leaving behind the life you know. But the best part about moving is all the possibilities because with how much we've moved, I've met people I never would have met otherwise. I've done things I never would have done, like riding a bike, speaking French, and memorizing an entire play. And you get to see so many sites. Like, I got to see a, well, not the Colosseum, but a Colosseum when we visited Italy. We got to see the statue of the Little Mermaid, which the real, well, not the real story, but what? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Copenhagen. Yeah, that, I thought we went to Copenhagen. We didn't go to Cop. Okay, I haven't been to Copenhagen, so I haven't seen that. <laughs> but I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of museums. And honestly, I think a lot of people get hung up on, but I know everyone here. Oh, come on. That's the best part. You know you have friends all around the world the more you move. That's what I like. Andrew says the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. I don't know what that has to do with it. Oh, Kim says uh, leaving good friends behind like the Hames and Criders. Yes, that is it's very painful when you have good friends that you've just done a lot with to say goodbye. 
But the good news is, especially when you move often, it's never truly goodbye. It's see you later. And so I can't wait for that, Kim. And Alf says, getting a new start with new is both the best and the worst thing about moving. Yes. It's it's very scary moving, but it's also empowering. And I just, I like it. Thank you for your question. So from Socks. Also, y'all, hang on. I just want to say, first off, thank you for all the questions. I love how y'all keep me on the edge of my seat when it comes to questions, because I had like five until like 10 minutes ago, and then like 10 came in in like the last 10 minutes, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. So from Socks, what are your thoughts on sharing politics on social media? Got to be very careful. I talk about that later on, actually, in the show. But you, you got to be careful. It's very polarized, so be wise. That's the best thing I got. Especially because you got to remember who controls social media. So you got to be really wise with that. Thank you for the question, though, Socks. So from Traveler, tomorrow I am going on a road trip that will last a few days. Any ideas slash tips on making the time go by in the car? Sleep. Unless you're driving. If you're driving, don't sleep. I don't recommend that. But playing I Spy is good. Reminiscing about old stories. Putting on the entire soundtrack of a musical and trying to sing every single line. That helps me. Like, it's it's really fun. Like, you really test your range and... Yeah. It depends. Are there going to be other people in the car? Because that would be difficult. And I still would sing. It's like, you're you're in the car? Fine, all right, let me belt out my Jean Valjean. Kim says, listen to a book. That is good if you can stay awake while listening to a book. I I feel like when I'm listening to an audiobook while I'm driving, I'm thinking about the book and not the road, but songs, I've memorized the words, so nothing surprises me. Am I the only one who does that? But, mm. Alf says, sing a song as a family. That is great, yes. When we would drive up to Montana from Missouri... Oh my gosh, we would like sing for like 20 hours, just random songs we found. Everything from like Spongebob to, oh gosh, well Spongebob to everything else. And Isabella says musicals are my choice. Yes, yes. And Sarah says that would be fun to listen to a musical. It really is. And it's fun to pretend you're in the musical too when you're driving, except everyone has a car and it would be pretty cathartic, I think. That might not be the right word there, but I think so. Okay, from Animal, they are asking, what is the only fish that has eyelids? Answer, the shark. Thank you for spoiling that for me, Animal. Eyelids are for wetting the eyes, so fish do not need them. Sharks have them to protect their eyes when they eat their prey. Well, enjoy the water. Love the show. <laughs> I, I love the show, too. Uh... Alf says he's he's uh, sang the Scrubs musical episode on the way up to Montana. Yes, it's great. That is a really funny episode. Like, if y'all watch Scrubs, that's the only episode you need. Even though they're pretty good. Okay, next up, from Table Tennis. When was the game Ping Pong invented? My internet is down. Thanks for the answer. I, I mean this respectfully. You might be a liar because you couldn't turn in this question without internet. But I will help you. Okay, let's figure this out. Invention of ping pong. Doo -doo. The name ping pong was invented by the English firm J. Jacques and Son at the Sun at the end of the 1800s and later trademarked in the United States by Parker Brothers. I believe it. Thank you for the question. I'm glad I could help. Okay, so it is now time to move on to our philosophy phrase of the day, which is right here. As you can see, it comes from Albert Einstein himself, Mr. Theory of Relativity. And this quote just means so much to me. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. I really wish more people knew that, so that way we don't have to have our lectures to explain something that we could explain in five minutes. You know who you are. All right, so... <laughs> Let's get right back into your questions. From American Dad, if you could be any Pokemon, what would it be? Fascinating philosophical question. 
if you could be any Pokemon, what would it be? Well, you got to pick a cool one. And you also have to realize if you're a Pokemon, that means you're going to be, like, put into a ball and then chosen to fight at will. Which doesn't sound that bad. I wouldn't mind that existence. But, okay. I guess I'd be Lucario or Agron. I like those. If y'all could be a Pokemon, what would you be? Or do you want to be a Pokemon? Would you want to just be an apple instead? Okay. From Timex. I can't decide if I should buy a wristwatch. What do you think? Do you have a watch? Thanks in advance. Love the show. I do have a watch, but I have a perpetuancy to lose all my watches, so I tend to rely on my phone. But I do have my watch with me over here, and it's this one. So to anyone who wants to copy me, that is the right watch. And Sarah said she would be Pikachu. That is a good one. Pikachu, or however it goes. Okay. So yeah, what do I think about watches? They're great. Help you see time go. But, hang on, my mom's giving me a sign here. She's saying I, sh I should phone call. Or use my phone. Right, yes. Mom uses her phone. I use my phone most of the time. And it's got so many good features. And it has, like, so many different sounds. Like, for an alarm, you could just have a random person screaming duck or something. I, I, pff, I like that. I've yet to see a watch do that. Thank you for the question. <laughs> Al said he would Snorlax or Dads, and Andrew said he'd be Charizard. I could see both of that fitting, y'all. <laughs> okay. From Samus. Who is your favorite Nintendo IP? Zelda. And by Zelda, I mean the Legend of Zelda series or Link. I would personally love to be Ganondorf. Have those giant swords turn into a giant beast. That would be awesome. Okay. Oh, wait, Andrew says he changed his mind. He'd rather be Dragonite. Really? That guy? I think I could beat up Dragonite. Pokedex, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Someone make a Pokedex entry for me. Isaac, Isaac Hames. Okay. <laughs> from Mr. Missus. If you could live anywhere in the world outside the USA, where would you live? I'll never tell. Okay, no. That's not what the show is about. Fine. I'll tell you. Well, really, there's nowhere I'd rather live than the US. But if I had to pick, I'd want several homes. Maybe... I'd like to go to Denmark. That's a great place. Take in Japan, like how they're able to have so many people in such a small landmass is just incredible to me. And the fact that they invented Nintendo. I want to take in that land. What about y'all? If you could live anywhere in the world outside the U.S., where would you live? Oh, also Italy. And then you just got to eat gelato all day. Because I'm assuming if I'm living outside the U.S., I'm like a millionaire or billionaire. Alf said he'd go to Australia. Yes, that is a good place, too. Okay, second to last. From John Dewey, inventor of the Dewey Decimal System. What is your favorite book outside the Bible? Well, there are a lot. I think... <sighs> Suzanne Collins is a great author. Author of The Hunger Games. That whole series is just amazing. But I think her latest book, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, is probably my favorite because of everything else. Uh, also, anything by G.A. Henty is great, like The Boy Knight. What was the other one? By Right of Conquest uh, or With Cortez in Mexico. That's a great historical fiction book, but yet it has a lot of historical truth to it. And G yeah, so those are my favorite authors. I hope that helps. But thank you. That's a good question. And if what's y'all's favorite books outside the Bible? Because there's a lot. And Rhonda says she would go to Norway or Ireland. Woo, we're going to Ireland. Yay. Good choice. Okay. And last up, from Bubble Bobble, do you play any instruments? This is a technical question because I do, but I don't continue playing them. Like, I haven't practiced them, but I can. The instruments that I play, I guess I'll put in quotes, is guitar, violin, and piano. Those are my favorites. But I really want to try out the accordion. Like, if the accordion or a saxophone just got dropped off at my house, I would play it after making sure that it didn't belong to anyone else. But, oh, hang on. Back to the books. Alf says he likes Calvin and Hobbes. True, those are great. 
Sarah says she likes Keeper of the Lost Cities or any book by Karen Whitmire or Whitemeyer. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. But those are great. And since we're at the last one, I'm going to ask you guys too. What instruments do you play or did you play them in high school? Did you play them in college? How has music impacted your life? There's a lot of good questions there. But okay, we're going to get into a brief message and then we'll get to the main event of the evening, which I know you guys are sticking around for. With so much going on in the world, I'm going to go to my conservative in college thoughts. And there's just been so much happening, guys. Like, there, there's no way we could cover it all, and I'm sure we aren't here to discuss it all. So, in class, we've been learning a lot about equality and about concepts that are really hard to explain. So I have like a million thoughts that I wanted to discuss all of them. But I want to make sure they're sorted out, effective, and meaningful, so I'll do a real conservative in college segment next week. But with that, not, okay, we're not at closing thoughts, just, just ignore this for now. Okay, we'll stick with conservative in college, but here we go. Also, to end, enough stalling, bring on the mail, Andrew, I swear, okay. Just so the, for the record, this isn't a regular thing, guys. I'm not just going to eat something because you tell me to. I don't like mayo on, like, anything. And my brother always makes me. So, here we go. Also, why a spoonful? Why'd you guys make me eat it? This just looks so disgusting. Why do you, does anyone like this? I don't know how to say this. If you like this, you're probably wrong. <sighs> Do y'all have any tips? Like just, okay, no, okay. Oh, God. What is wrong with you guys? <coughs> Kim, you got this. I do not got this. No. Ugh, just swallow. Yeah, oh, good, good. Have water ready. Way ahead of you, Ron. <coughs> Seriously, what? Andrew. Okay. Mayo's awful. Is Miracle Whip different? No, I'm not going to ask that. I'm not going to try it. <laughs> Mustard next week. No, stop typing that, Alf. No. <coughs> yeah. Man wins because mayo's disgusting. This man doesn't win. No. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you guys. Oh, hang on. We had one more question sneak in. Let's, t let's take a look. Even though the last time I did this, I had to eat mayo. So... From sp Please make this a regular thing. Eat something super spicy next time. No. What? You can't just be that vague. Something spicy. That could be anything. I've tried spice. And Al says on corn dogs, mustard is delicious. And Rhonda says mustard on crackers. Y'all are insane. No. Why? You know what's good on crackers? Cheese. Corn dogs. Cheese. Ketchup. That's better. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay, so we're, we're entering our closing thoughts. So, guys, as we close our show tonight, I'm going to encourage you all to be like me, to hear and try new ideas, and if you don't like them, spit them out. But, I just, I just, I can't get over it. How do you like mayo? I could see myself liking it if you, like, force-fed me it every day. But what kind of existence is that? Anyway, okay. But to be fair, just to you guys, I don't enjoy ketchup by the spoonful either. It's too powerful on its own. So I want to thank you, Andrew, for always being the one to force me to try new things. And if y'all have something specific you want me to try instead of just like what Andrew's writing now, do spicy. What does that mean? 
let me know. And I will catch y'all same time, same place next week. Thank you all. God bless.